This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the fast and easy way to make a beautiful website. Howdy freaking doodle, welcome back. Let me set you guys down here. That lighting is awful, <sighs> shite. Let's try over here my tried and tested. That's better. My hair is like a wild mane because I've just gotten out of the shower, but I've had two cups of coffee and I'm motivated to film. <sighs> we are out here making serious construction moves in this vlog, my friends. This is going to be um, a loft vlog, very much lots of kind of home improvements, DIY, using the muscles, um, we're going to be building stuff, we're going to be upgrading stuff, we're going to be hanging pictures, it's going to be a good time. Still kind of surprised that these are the type of videos that you guys are really into from me. Count back, I feel like this is phase five maybe of apartment progress, I've been living here for a year and a half. I do have a playlist where I think you can watch from the start. I've got a flame under my ass now to get this place done and to really have it looking how I always envisioned it. It's always been feeling like it's half done and I'm sure that you've noticed that as well, even though I am a minimal person. I was really excited to get back and just tear into a lot of the things that I didn't do during the pandemic. Like why didn't I do all of this work? I had so much time and I just have a renewed sense of my faith in my ability. So, uh, so I bought a jigsaw, which I think says a lot. Do I have a workbench or a vice or many of the tools that you would need? No, but we move. And a way to get into the nitty gritty of building stuff um, for the apartment. There's just like little things that I know I can do myself. And I was toying about custom orders and task rabbits and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, Tara, get a jigsaw. They're $30, you can do this here. I have this place tip top down to the extension cords. I'm even getting all nice new extension cords for everything. Finally decided on some new prints to get for the gallery wall, because you know I'm picky as hell. The prints all rolled out. I will leave the company that I bought them from, but I'm so, so impressed with the quality. Same kind of material as my actual, like legitimate print. Frames are on the way, so you'll see me put those together real soon. Late on the game, but finally got proper hoover. I obviously have my little vacuum robot, which is great for the everyday, but I needed something to get into the nooks and crannies and just for future things. A cordless bad boy that kind of has an extension on it. This is what I mean, like finally getting around to details, like nice little soap dispensers. I got one for my washing up liquid and my kitchen soap. To just get stuck into organizing the apartment. I mean, it looks relatively clean right now. It's surface clean though. Like I need to rip out all the wardrobes that are a mess. I just need to like for myself before starting anything, get a good baseline organization inside and outside and then I can go ahead with my projects with a clear conscience. Cannot wait to get stuck into the building projects, but I'm, I'm starting off nice and easy today. I feel like this week first, I need to get on top of like organizing everything. I mean, it's pretty clean right now, but everything was like shoved into the closets, shoved into the utility closet before I left. And like, if I was to open those doors right now, it would be a disaster. I need to do my closet switch out, stuff like that. I don't know about you, but like when I'm starting, something like this, like um, a new project. I feel like I need to get into all the nooks and crannies and really start with a clean base with everything so that I can kind of go forth with a clear conscience because I know I'm going to be making a mess when I start building. I'm gonna rehang the curtains. I don't know if you can see that wire, but it's literally hanging on by a thread. It's like wrapped around this random thing instead of being attached to the uh, other end up there. So we're gonna have to sort that out. I'm also gonna put my screen curtain back up. You know, I have that soft curtain there as a privacy block for during the day. Um, but when I got back, it was really sagged. Like this wire rail was super sagging. Um, I don't know if it just got saggy over time or maybe people were like pulling on it too hard. I don't know, it's honestly not the best. Um, but I've gone up and I've tightened it. The old clips that I was talking about that were super 
visible and just stuck out like a sore thumb. So hopefully these white ones will blend in a lot more. I know they will, they're definitely gonna look better. And also, you'd be shocked to know, I'm finally addressing the skirting board situation. I'm gonna be spackling all the holes. I think I'm gonna paint the uh, thingies uh, white. No, so many of you have hated this, but I personally love it like for photos. It looks really industrial and kind of rough around the edges. And you know me, that's a bit of me. I'm a little rough around the edges. I put a very, something really thin at, down at some point. So yeah, that's what's up. Also thumbs up if you were pumped to kind of get stuck into these DIY projects with me. I bought an extra wire rail set because I'm not sure if the broken one is missing parts, but for anyone wondering what one I use, I think this is Ikea. So it's looking much, much better. It's still a little bit of a dip, but it's much tighter than it was before. And the white clips blend into the blinds behind. I knew keeping this wood would come in handy. I actually have more than this, but these shape pieces are literally perfect for what I'm doing. Because honestly, one of the biggest pains about doing DIY jobs is actually collecting the materials and I actually have these at the back of the closet from building this. Today I'm not cutting, I'm just going to be measuring and marking everything out. I think when you're in a relationship you can kind of lose faith in yourself about your capabilities and I know I can make all of these things myself. Like I was lucky enough to do woodwork and construction all the way up to when I left school. It was the only thing I was good at and then I kind of, I don't know, I just lost faith that I can do those things by myself and you know putting things off thinking like oh I need someone else to help me with this and all of that stuff and that's just like not the case. Albeit I have amazing memories building a lot of the stuff and upgrading a lot of stuff from this apartment I still value and appreciate but I also am in a space now where I'm like you know what I am well able. I'm trying to talk about more than just pieces of wood here but for anyone that needs to hear today like you are well able you are capable and you can do it on your own. Okay, faith restored and Lucy Moon's stories playing in the background. This is the sauce we're doing, something new, a little break from Rouse. Extortionally expensive, but I just can't help myself when I see something, something new at the store and oh, black trouble sounds delicious right about now, so bougie. I don't know, it just reminds me of a restaurant flavor I haven't had in a long time. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. I recall my presentation skills getting any better but I got this tip to swirl the plate. Oh you know what that looked more promising than it actually was. Okay it's totally the wrong type of parmesan but this is the spaghetti. Not bad eh? Nice little tower. It's got some good profile height on it. Leaving the garlic bread off for a nice little healthy side of greens. Jeez there's a bit of a kick off that. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I did to help me choose the 
layout for the gallery wall and the newer pieces I have. Basically what I did was I just copied and pasted a blank bit of the wall to give myself like a really rough <laughs> blank brick wall to work on and then because we already had this artwork up I was able to scale my new pictures. Now it's just a matter of playing around with how I want things. Okay, so you're going to see me in this outfit again at the end of the vlog, but I accidentally deleted the clip where I took you shopping for probably the most expensive piece of furniture I've ever bought. Maybe the second most like valuable thing, honestly, in the flat, but um, it was just one of those things. I wanted to invest in it as soon as I got back to the flat, I was like... I need to change this now. So this is my third little piece from Home Union. All the other pieces I have are kind of small, like the mirror in the entryway, the wavy mirror. Um, I've got um, an Alvar Alto vase from there also, which I love, but this is my first kind of real investment piece of furniture. And I don't really want to get into it, but just replacing this chair um, is something that is really meaningful to me. And I just wanted to replace it with something super special and super my taste. So without further ado, let's do a little comparison side by side of the before and after. Okay, so this is the furniture piece in question. It was saved from the side of the street. On the day that I moved out of my old Upper East Side apartment, like I kept it because it's like a nice chair. It's a bit banged up, but you know, it has character. It's a good shape. It's comfy, but it's not really my style. Ah, uh, so weird. I love it. It's like this wavy chair. It's made out of one single piece of plywood. Like there's no joints or anything. Oh, it's got this beautiful like aged leather and uh, I absolutely adore it. It's a nice big sort of wide, wide chair and I don't mind mixing woods. I feel like the dark seat with the coffee table still works. Oh, I'm so happy to own it. I'm so excited. I like couldn't stop thinking about it. But I absolutely adore it. It is a obviously vintage Peter Danko chair from the late 1970s. So even though it was extortionately expensive, it was a bit of a gift to myself for surviving the year, but it is a museum grade piece. So it's never going to lose value. The other one, like the matching one is in the Smithsonian, like on display. So I feel very lucky to own it. I don't know. I just know I'm going to treat this piece well. Being able to invest in a piece of furniture like this is a bit of a dream. I'm not going to lie. Like, you guys know I love my designy bits and I wanted to buy something that I haven't really seen replicated yet. I've been definitely moving away from mass produced furniture. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Like I have replica Ames chairs, and but furniture even overcloses the one thing. Like if I had all the money in the world, I would buy as much vintage furniture as possible. p.m. surprise storm marking my drill bit so I know how deep I need to go also please do not do as I do I would not recommend going up a ladder by yourself you should always have someone at the bottom to hold it but um, I'm gonna take extra precautions to be safe drilling in the brick no joke the crazy fuzzy hair but my god gallery walling is harder than it looks no wonder I've been putting it off for so long it's so hard to get like anyway I drilled a lot of holes just in case because I definitely will be moving things around this morning this is what we're working with before bed I move things around and I'm much much happier with this layout um, I'm probably going to swap out this print and maybe this print. I've ordered two new ones, so by the end of this vlog they should be here. And you'll have a bit more of a complete look at this area. But now I'm starting, like I can work with this. From here I can like figure my shit out basically. Ignore the baby hairs and just the look. I don't know what it is, but when I'm doing DIY I just have to be like comfy in old clothes for messing around to attempt. I mean, my outfits may change. I don't know how much I'm gonna get done in a day or two. I'm guessing that this is gonna take me at least two days of work, but we are making a bookshelf for this corner in a similar vein 
to this, but not quite. Shelf with maybe like two, one or two tiers, just as a little kind of library nook for all of my beautiful books. Build a unit that would just nicely display them. I feel like it's always nice to have a bit of your personality in a flat and for people to browse through. Um, and also somewhere to hide these god awful like Wi-Fi box situations. Like look how many wires there are. It's so much, like I can't cut this white chunky one down anymore. So hoping that this little unit that I build will have a kind of a hidden area where I can just stuff all of that practical stuff. The problem is nothing about, well, the whole apartment, but also this corner in particular, nothing is even about it. So when you're obviously building something, you go by even measurements, but this is literally wonky by about an inch on all sides. Like nothing is straight. This side is an inch higher than that side. This width is not the same as the width on the top. It's a little complicated. It's gonna come out a little bit further than this wall, just like the other unit. I've got a really clear idea of what I wanna do in my head now after some failed kind of um, experiments, shall we say. I took a clip the other night explaining what I wanna do, so I'm gonna insert that now. And then here's the situation with the kitchen. I kind of have it back to how it was before. I haven't spent too much time re reorganizing up here because like I said, I'm getting a whole new thing of ceramics and I'm just gonna make this much more artful and beautiful um, and just take it up a notch from what it was before. But anyway, um, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. So this is why you should always draft up your ideas because this looks insane. Now, this is not what I envisioned. It's just some leftover foam board I had and I cut out the pieces, but I envisioned this backsplash that was kind of in the shape of a contour map if you've ever seen like architectural drawings or site drawings they're they're kind of just really lovely wavy lines and i was like mm, what can i add as a backsplash that isn't like peel and stick tiles because that's just not the vibe that i'm going for really i was just trying to figure out how i could do something artistic behind the sink that was both practical and a little bit unique that just had my own like creativity put on it. So what I envisioned was that maybe I would get a birch plywood that, that was similar color to this kind of fake birch plywood um, and make a backsplash. In my head, it sounded amazing, but in practicality, I absolutely hated it. Not just because it's in this weird like black and white However, this project did start my brain ticking in terms of what I could do, which is what all inside here is for. May have overestimated how much I would need. I'm not looking my usual raggedy DIY self today because I had to go shoot and take a break from all of this. Uh, building work which will resume i'm actually gonna paint this maybe later today but before we continue and before i get to show you guys kind of all the end result of the progress we made this week which is so much like i honestly already feel so much happier shout out to my faithful sponsor squarespace who enabled me to make these videos regularly as a full-time job appreciate you if you don't or maybe you just didn't need a website before a little reminder that they are the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful looking website. Their website templates are so beautiful. It just takes all of the hard work and coding out of making a website, but they're still highly customizable. You can upload your content on there for whatever your needs are, but you can make like a blog, an e-shop, a portfolio, whatever your slice of the internet needs to be, Squarespace can do it. And you can do it with all of the help of their 24 seven support team. As a viewer of mine, you can just try it for two weeks. See if you like it. It's squarespace.com slash term it will be linked in the description below and if you really like your website and you want to push it live you can use my code termer for 10% off your future website billing back to work got my little pin nails I've opted for the glue first nail after because I just feel like at least it's all sort of holding together while I put the nails in that's how I learned it in school anyway obviously it's a lot easier if you've Vices and all the right equipment, but uh, you know, it's doing the job, it's doing the job. Never used maths, but did use my practical skills.
your coat. Semi clear gloss so it's easy to clean. Let phase two of the backsplash and the bookcase begin. But basically what I bought is these polystyrene um, half rounds. They're like one inch half rounds from Home Depot. Get the jigsaw back out to cut these. Hopefully they're not too much of a pain. Oh my God, you guys, Jean-Michel Basquiat would be shaking. Project number one, a success. Look at her, different angle, different light, but like, I'm shocked. She's sturdy, lads, not a rock out of her. I mean, unfortunately, it's not going into a sturdy corner, so I'll probably be doing a little bit of adjusting, but so chuffed with how it came out. So what I built was just this concealed section to hide, um, all of that crap basically that's in the corner and um, that's really really difficult to cut hide because there were so many wires as i showed you earlier and they're really thick juicy wires so hopefully i can like thread it through the back and just have it kind of hidden back there so um i can still display my books and obviously it adds just a little bit more of an interesting design element very simple i know but at the same time, it's just a little bit more interesting than if it was just the plain shelves as it was before. I think it'll just be a nice design detail as well to have something that's kind of consistent throughout. So like the vertical lines here and the same texture that's gonna be in the kitchen. The backsplash is done by the way. It needs one more coat of black spray paint because you can see the glue is kind of poking through, but also looking really well. And I double checked before everything, like all the pieces should fit. Looking very crazy, but feeling very accomplished. I'll finish them off, put them in their places, style them, and then give you a look at the finished product, hopefully. Slipping in here to say the real achievement is that I got through this whole week without breaking a damn nail. Okay, the kitchen could do with some finesse and some tweaking, but we're off to a good start. I'm so happy with how the backsplash looks. Like it came out exactly how I envisioned it. And I tested like on a spare one, the paint, that Rust Liam paint is so good. Like I put oil on it and I like wiped it down. It All the stains come off, so it should be pretty easy to maintain, even though it's in sort of like a wet area.
This is the current finished situation. The gallery wall has come on loads. Just need to fill up a tiny bit of space. I might just actually just get some bigger frames or paint something and just let, leave it like against the wall, like these two rogue ones here. But I'm so happy. Everything feels fixed and clean. And I mean, the floors are not clean. I need to give them a big hoover now because they're sawdust and like my own bloody long hair and just everything on it. But as you saw me doing, I've assembled very, very loosely the bookshelf. All of the internet's hooked back up now. And this is the little Ericon cover just in case I'm shooting and I want to hide it that my friend made me last year. You might remember that. A lot of styling work definitely needs to be done, but I just kind of wanted to throw something on there just to give you, just to give you a bit of an idea of the new sort of layout in this corner. I absolutely love it. This is always kind of what I envisioned. I always envisioned all of the color from the apartment coming from like the furniture and all of the pictures. And yeah, I feel like all the hard work has paid off. Oh, I don't think I got to show you this print, but I got um, a Daft Punk poster as well, which I love so much. Like these are all great and I love them, but like this is a bit of me, you know? Loving the changes are really starting to feel like home and like I've kind of reclaimed the space doing all of these little things to just more reflection of me. It's really empowering actually. So if any of you are in a funk, I would highly recommend. I know this vlog is a bit jam packed, so I hope you enjoyed coming along. Like these are the kind of vlogs that I love to put up, ones that are just like so meaty, like every second counts in these vlogs. And I hope that uh, you weren't looking away or distracted with these kind of vlogs. I really like people to be, you know, seeing all the nuances of what's happening and really come along on the journey as opposed to like throwing it in the background. It's kind of one of those vlogs for me. Be sure to thumbs up before I go. And like a little personal favor, if there's anyone that you're friends with that you think might like my content, please feel free to share the video. I know a lot of you are interested in interiors, so I would love for you to spread the love so more people can find me and watch these videos because that's a comment I get a lot is um, that I should have more views. I think so too. I would love to reach more people. So anyway, I'm exhausted. My period has just hit. I'm excited to see your comments. A bit scared actually, because people tend to have an opinion on personal taste. But um, I hope you feel good after this video nonetheless. And I hope it helps you smash your Monday. I'll see you very, very soon. I might take a day off next week from the posts. And of course, don't forget, you can just follow me daily on Instagram. I post a lot. Bye.